When apples are ripe and ready at all the orchards, you wanna buy all of them you can. And what is a better way to preserve them than applesauce? Applesauce probably seems like something your grandma made, but I think it's about time you made it too. All you do is chunk up some apples, cook them for a while to draw out some of that extra liquid, really cook them down to become almost mush, run them through a food mill, and you are gonna have a delicious applesauce to enjoy all winter long. Jar it up and you're ready to go. All that's coming up on today's Wise Guide. I know you're probably thinking, seriously, applesauce? That sounds like a lot of work. And maybe it's something your grandma or mom did. I know, if you're like me, you grew up having homemade applesauce. Okay, you're probably saying, no, I'm not like that. I didn't grow up having homemade applesauce. Well, don't worry, you can now because it really is so easy. I think it sounds like a lot of work, but once you get into it, it's extremely easy and you're gonna wonder why you don't make it time and again. And don't worry, you don't have to put away like hundreds of pints worth of applesauce. You can make as little or as much as you want. To start, you just want a variety of apples. I like to use whatever is in season. If you have a local orchard, go see what is right for the picking. That's where you're gonna get that really delicious apple flavor that you want. That's what applesauce is all about. Besides, half the time you buy it, it hardly even has a flavor. Like, what is it? It's just like an apple goo. When you have all your apples picked out and you can see I have a variety of colors, you just wanna leave the skins on. Yeah, that's right, it's that easy. And just cut them in quarters. Once they're cut into quarters, you can just slice out that center core and any of the seeds really quickly. You're probably wondering, why are you leaving the peels on? We're gonna pass them through a strainer later so it will take them out. That way, all the flavor from the peel is gonna go right into the applesauce. And it's easier. Who wants to peel an apple? Takes time. I don't have that time. Chop your apples into small pieces. You don't have to worry about being too even here. And then throw them right into a nonstick kettle. Yes, I know I don't usually use nonstick, but for this it's really important. As they cook down and you pour off some of that extra liquid, they're gonna almost wanna stick or burn if you have a really thin kettle that isn't nonstick. So the nonstick really helps. Just place it right on the stove. No, do not add any water, but put the lid on and place it over low heat. This is important. This is a really low and slow process. You're gonna just slowly start drawing out the extra moisture that's in these apples. The more ripe they are, the more moisture they're gonna have. When you start seeing some of that condensation on the top of the lid, or if you lift it up and have a whole bunch of steam, just try to pour off some of the liquid. You're gonna do this intermittently about every five to 10 minutes until they become really mashed up and you get all that liquid out. I just leave that lid on, crack it slightly, take two hot pads and just pour it off into a measuring cup. Honestly, I think you're gonna discover that this apple water that's coming off should be bottled up and drank because it's delicious. It's not apple cider, it's definitely not apple juice, it is somewhere in between. And I'm gonna call that it should be the next health craze. Forget coconut water, let's just drink apple water. Keep stirring, pouring off the liquid, and letting them cook really well. You don't wanna have any of these be still crunchy or crispy because then they're not gonna pass through a food mill. So keep stirring until they become mush. If you're kinda of wondering if they're breaking down, just take a potato masher and just mash it up. Then you're gonna be able to tell if these are really cooked. Once it looks kind of like an ugly applesauce and you see that they're kind of becoming a mash and really cooking together, you can just remove it from the heat. At this point, it is best just to pass it through a food mill. I sometimes use a conical strainer, but to try to make this really simple, I thought let's just use something a lot of you will have or be able to find, and that's a food mill. Okay, maybe you don't have a food mill, but believe me, they're everywhere. You can probably just even find one at a secondhand store. Just put it into a fine attachment. You can usually change the plates in them. You want this one to be really fine. And then just start dumping your applesauce in. Yeah, it's that easy. Like seriously, you're gonna wonder why you don't make applesauce all the time. Just start turning it, passing it through. If you look at the bottom, you're getting beautiful applesauce and look how thick it is. That's why it's important to pour off that liquid. If you want a really thin applesauce, you can leave that liquid in. It's gonna be a lot thinner and runnier, but if that's what you like, totally fine. Except not. I'm joking. You can do it at this point. It's just funny. Once it's all passed through the food mill, you can see that there's really not that much left. It's just all the skins and pulp. It really does cook down. Let it cool down to room temperature, jar it up, or place it in containers. And at this point, I like to freeze it. 
This isn't making that much, but it's only gonna last about a week in the fridge. So if you freeze it, you can enjoy it whenever you want in the winter. And I have the best memories of growing up, pulling an applesauce out of the freezer, thawing it slightly, but still leaving it kind of icy. And that way you would just eat the icy applesauce and let me tell you something. It's delicious and it's still something I crave. It's one of those food memories that I just cannot get past. Once your applesauce is all jarred up or in containers, just place it in the freezer or keep one in the fridge to eat. At this point, taste it. If you wanna sweeten it, add some sugar. Usually this time of year, they are ripe enough and juicy enough that you don't need to add any sugar, but you can flavor it however you want. If you agree and think this applesauce is easy, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. The recipe, even though you hardly need one, is in the description box. And until next time, get out there and enjoy fall.